Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Girl Ty here, which stands for Together Individual Entertainment. And today's story for our Halloween Spectacular Countdown is, of course, the beloved R Bark that recently shut down this year after 25 years. Uh, and of course, we all remember him. It's Arthur. Yep, Arthur the R Bark, written by yours truly, Mark Brown. And I feel sad that I had to go to retirement and all that stuff, but I just wish it didn't. Speaking of retirement, I am sorry to say, but this year, I got some really bad news and everything. Uh, fan of the opera? Guess what? This year is your last chance to see it, for real. Because, well, fan of the opera is not returning ever again. After 35 years... A fan of the opera from Andrew Lee Weber. Yeah, it's uh, it's shutting down after 2022. So, yeah. I really did not want to see Fan of the Opera go either of this year. But, I don't know. But I am lucky I had a chance to see with my music department when I was in school. Excuse me. Uh, when I was junior in high school, of course, uh, the band, choir, and orchestra, we all went to New York City. We saw Van the Opera. I will admit, it was awesome, but the chandelier thing was a total disappointment. Either way, many things have come to an end this year, and uh, I just wish I can give you the bigger news about Kenny Wood next year, but I can't. So, I really have to wait and see where this is all going to go. So, uh, yeah. So, let's get into our story, Arthur's Halloween. All right. There we go. It, oh, sorry. It was the night before Halloween. Arthur's family was busy making the house look spooky. It looked so spooky, in fact, that Arthur had trouble falling asleep. Things were even worse. The next morning, help! screamed Arthur. When he opened his eyes, it's just me, said his sister, D.W. Boy, are you jumpy. Don't forget, you have to take me trick-or-treating night. Do I really have to? Arthur asked as he ate his cereal. You really do, said his mother. And I want to go to every house, said D.W. Arthur groaned. I'll be the only one who has to drag his baby sister along. Arthur didn't recognize anyone at school. There was a giant robot in the classroom taking attendance. You sound just like my teacher, Mr. Markov, said Arthur. I am your teacher, said the robot. The only one Arthur recognized was the brain. He was wrapped up in aluminum foil. I'm a baked potato, said the brain. Franting passed out spectacular special morning snacks. Eat these, she said. They're bat wing brownies and vampire blood. Every one ate them except Arthur. Then they all put on blindfolds. Buster passed around bowls. He said were filled with human eyeballs, hearts, and brains. Arthur turned pale. When it was his turn, he wouldn't even touch them. What a scaredy cat, said Francie. Chicken, said Muffy. They're only peel, grapes, jello, and cold spaghetti. When it came time to go trick-or-treating, Buster knew which houses to skip. Don't go there, he said. They only give apples. Gross, said Francie. And don't go to the big house on the corner, said Buster. That's the witch's house. My brother saw someone go in there last Halloween, and he never came out. Arthur tried not to look afraid. Arthur and his sister had trouble keeping up with the others. First, D.W. got her tail caught, then her bag broke. You're such a pain in the neck, said Arthur. D.W. be short for dimwit. But D.W. didn't answer. Arthur turned around just in time to see her disappear into the witch's house. Arthur's hands turned ice cold, and his heart began to race. He walked up to the spooky old house. The front door was open, just a crack. Slowly, Arthur went out inside. Look, cried Buster. Arthur just went into the witch's house. 
Shooting probably and we'll put Arthur and DW to her oven, just like Hansel and Gretel, said Sue Ellen. Maybe she's using them for weird science experiments, said the brain. I bet she locked them in the cellar to start, said Buster. Maybe we should follow him, said Francine. Maybe we should call the police, said Muffy. Everyone was too scared to move. Inside the house, it was very cold. Arthur thought he saw ghosts all around him. He walked down a long, dark hall. At the end, he saw a light under the door. He heard voices. One was his sister. Oh, there you are, said the witch. We were waiting for you. I came to get my sister. We have to go. I hear my mother calling us. Said Arthur, I don't hear anything, said D.W. My name is Mrs. Tibble. I hope you won't leave without some cider and donuts first. They're chocolate, your favorite, said D.W. I've waited all night for trick-or-treaters, but you're the only ones, said Mrs. Tibble. Years ago, the doorbell never stopped ringing. Maybe it's broken, like the window, said D.W. Mrs. Tibble nodded. It is harder for me to keep up with this big uh, place these days. Maybe if we help you fix up your yard, the place won't look so spooky, said Arthur. Arthur finished his donuts. As Mrs. Tibble opened the door and turned on the porch light, she gave Arthur and D.W. a big hug. See you Saturday to rake leaves, said Arthur. You're still alive, said Francie. I can't believe you went in there alone, said Bray. You're so brave, said Sue Ellen. What's in the bag, asked Buster. Probably eyeballs, hearts, and brains, said Francine. It's easy to find out, said Arthur. Just close your eyes and reach in unless you're too scared. We've been... To every house now. Can we take the shortcut home to the cemetery? asked CW. The cemetery on Halloween? Are you guys crazy? asked Francine. Follow me, said Arthur. As he marched ahead, the cemetery is a great place. People are just dying to get in. All right, so that was Arthur's Halloween. I hope all of you enjoyed this Halloween particular, you know, thing going on. And so this is Ty saying... Happy Halloween. Bye.